Professor Dr. Crossfeld, I am honored to have this opportunity to interview you. Now grand interested colleagues from medicine, as well as citizens, have the chance to learn more about coronavirus treatment options through antibody therapy. You are a leading scientist in cellular biology at the Erasmus Medical Center in Rotterdam, in the beautiful country of the Netherlands. Would you kindly briefly introduce yourself and explain your specialist areas to our viewers, please? Um, I am, as you said, um, part of the Department of Cell Biology at the Erasmus Medical Center. And in this particular uh, area, we uh, have three teams working, uh, one with a coronavirus expert in Utrecht called Peter Jan Bos, and a person upstairs here at the Erasmus Medical Center who has a BSL-3 safe facility and can do in vivo experiments with the coronavirus. And your specialist area is the cell biology. Yes, and my in this particular uh, uh, case, my <clears throat> our role is of my team is that we have uh, some time ago generated mice where we have deleted the genes that make mouse antibodies and replace them with genes that make human antibodies. And so when you immunize these mice, uh, the result will be that you obtain human antibodies. The reason for doing this is that mouse antibodies, when given to humans, uh, cause an immune reaction that is uh, not a good thing. While if you give human antibodies to humans, uh, there is uh, no such uh, reaction. And so it's an advantage to have human antibodies. Yes, of course. That's why they use antibodies from recovered patients at right. the moment. So that's the other way of obtaining antibodies. In mid-March, the spectacular news that you have had a working antibody against SARS-CoV-2 in your university refrigerator for years have faced. To date, we haven't seen much coverage in the mainstream media. Why do you think that is? Uh, we uh, try to keep it as quiet as possible because um, uh, we rather work on progress and have been doing so. Um, so, in the meantime, we uh, have uh, pretty much solved how the antibody actually works, how it prevents the virus from uh, infecting uh, cells, um, and in the meantime, we have done the first animal experiments, and again, the result there looks good in that it appears to protect the animals from the virus. I read in an article from the past when SARS-1 and SARS-MERS appeared that your students did the science about that in the housework and you already had antibodies against those diseases in your refrigerator. Is that correct? That's correct. In this particular case we uh, were part of a European project with uh, the, the people I just mentioned. And that was a project where we were trying to get antibodies that would uh, react with SARS-1, which of course was a much earlier outbreak, early this century. Um, MERS, that's the camel virus, and OC43, that's another coronavirus from Hong Kong that gives you flu uh, symptoms. And we were after getting antibodies that would react with all three of the coronaviruses. And the idea was that um, uh, they have in their, um, um, in the protein that binds to the cell for infection, uh, that they have conserved regions and we wanted to look whether we could raise antibodies that would bind to these conserved regions of all three viruses um, and um, hopefully then block their infection. That means you do three jobs in one time? That was the basic idea, yes. But of course in such an experiment, uh, nothing is perfect. We did find such antibodies 
uh, and publish those. Um, but uh, we also had a number of antibodies that did not cross-react with all three coronaviruses. And those were put in the freezer. Um, and uh, when SARS-2, so the new coronavirus of the current crisis, uh, appeared, um, we took them out of the freezer uh, to check whether they would possibly bind to SARS-2. And one of those antibodies, that's the one that uh, we are discussing, uh, indeed uh, binds uh, SARS-2 and blocks infection. So basically, these are great news, right? It is. <laughs> Uh, we will be able to uh, develop it further uh, to the clinic. Um, we are um, very close to signing an agreement with a big pharmaceutical company, uh, actually develop it uh, further for uh, clinical use uh, for patients as a therapeutic uh, uh, and also as a dose that you could give to people who are at high risk so that uh, they cannot be infected. For example, healthcare workers um, could get the antibody so that they would not be uh, infected. That means it is for protection. But what is going on with patients who are already infected? Uh, that um, would be, of course, uh, the therapeutic part of it. And um, that... Um, is one of the main goals, of course. We are trying both of these. So, um, obviously, we would like to treat patients that have been affected. So, that is my next question. There are clear indications that your approach is also very promising for other applications. What kind of support have you received so far? And who do you think might have let you down, so to speak? Uh, no, it's, uh, it, it's, it's actually amazing times. Uh, because um, uh, the rules, of course, everywhere have been relaxed. Um, bureaucracy has been uh, uh, basically decreased tremendously. So, for example, when um, I was looking um, for uh, money to be able to do the appropriate animal experiments, we have to be absolutely sure that this is safe, of course. Um, um, I, in no time, uh, via my connections in the city here, uh, was in touch with the relevant minister, who, you know, in a discussion of maybe three minutes, said, uh, you get your money. So, normally, that, of course, would never happen. So, it is very difficult for everybody at the moment. Oh, yes, it is. Um, it's, a, it's a totally changed situation. Um, like in uh, Germany, the rules are being relaxed uh, tremendously. Um, for us, for example, um, we are, um, the rest of the laboratory um, is uh, back in action, although be it in shifts so that we can keep the right distance. And the only exception uh, during the height of the crisis was uh, the group that works on Corona. We simply worked all day, every day. Thank you for that, Professor. Thank you for that. Professor Roosevelt, you are a member of BioArxive. How did your colleagues at the international level react to your publication in various specialist magazines? Are there offers of cooperation or is there generally more reluctance? Uh, well, <laughs> uh, after we placed the uh, uh, article on BioArxive, um, something happened that has never happened to me before. I have discovered a few things before, but this is just incredible. Uh, basically, my uh, telephone never stopped ringing. Uh, my email box uh, kept on being filled. The same for my colleagues who were contacted from all over the world. It's returned sort of to normal, but um, uh, the first uh, week or two, it was just unbelievable. So every pharmaceutical company was uh, interested. Um, uh, people were offering themselves as volunteers. Uh, it was really uh, an impressive response, and in particular, how people um, 
immediately offered themselves as volunteers to try and progress the research. And of course, a number of patients uh, offered themselves and said, well, I must have antibodies because I recovered. Um, can you, uh, uh, do you want to isolate my antibodies? Um, so it, it was a, a very impressive response. Um, basically very heartwarming. That means the support was amazing for you. Yep. What measures would you have taken so that the disease can be effectively combated and at the same time protect the economy from deteriorating so much? <laughs> well, that's not my uh, no <laughs> expertise. It's <laughs> difficult to comment. Uh, you know, it's, um, it appears uh, that the Northern View European countries, except perhaps Britain, um, have come through these uh, reasonably um, uh, okay. The economy, of course, is damaged, but that I think uh, was unavoidable. Uh, we simply uh, had to react. Um, I think in the whole set of measures, uh, keeping a distance, uh, washing your hands, no contact, um, is, are probably the most important measures that were taken. Uh, we had a huge discussion here about the mouth masks, uh, whether they help, yes or no. Um, uh, in some countries, they were, of course, uh, uh, had to be worn. Uh, in the Netherlands, they um, were deemed to be uh, unimportant and not effective. Uh, but in, uh, they've, they've changed their mind a bit in terms of we now have um, uh, the advice to have um, mouth masks in public transport. But in the street you see very few people with a mask. But maybe for stores where many people show up, or in areas where many people are sitting together, that makes sense, in my opinion. It does, um, but you know, if you go to a store, then, you know, the If the stores are fairly uh, small, then people have to wait outside at the appropriate distance from each other. And, uh, you know, if one comes out, the next one can go in. Um, so the same is, for example, true with do-it-yourself stores and, and all that sort of uh, um, uh, stores take measures uh, that um, people avoid risk as much as possible. Everybody has to take care of themselves and the other ones. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's very sensible. Recently, news came from the United States that doctors may have achieved remarkable success rating the coronavirus with the Ebola drug Remdesivir. Is there even a possibility that the two could be related according to your antibody therapy? How can you interpret that treatment? Well, I, uh, I am not sure whether it actually uh, greatly helps. We've seen these reports uh, a number of times, actually. Um, it keeps on repeating itself. Um, whether it really is a remarkable success, I'm uh, not particularly sure. Um, it should be remembered, of course, that that um, drug is a uh, what's called a replication inhibitor. And um, of course, this virus replicates as well. So uh, it may uh, help somewhat, but uh, I doubt it is uh, remarkable, so to speak. Professor, there are quite a few doctors and colleagues who are making the public feel insecure by spouting wild theories. Some say the coronavirus does not exist at all, for example, or others claim that it is just as harmless as the seasonal flu. How do you personally react to such reports? My reaction to it is fear sells. It's as simple as that. Making people scared is, is you know, it's, a, it's an old tactic, of course, to get attention. Um, so, um, and of course, when anything like this happens, uh, you know, wild theories immediately uh, come out. We, we, we had a big problem here in the Netherlands. It only lasted for a few days, but you know, people were trying to burn um, the 5G communication tower. Yeah. Completely nonsense, of course. Yep. 
it makes me a little bit worried because in my personal friends environment the people are getting crazy at the moment they talk about theories which i never expected they ever talk about but it happened and i'm afraid of those souls because they are really bad addicted of this news also they read it every day and they post it on facebook different kind of stories it makes me very sad this uh, fake news is uh, is is a very bad virus <laughs> it's much more harmful than the real virus i think I think Almost, yes i mean it 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 really is highly irresponsible to uh, do this um and you know it it really does not help and uh, a number of people uh, react to this by all sorts of different uh, damaging ways i have an information for my viewers in the footnotes you can find links to articles about professor dr roswell's research if you would like to support the research financially there's a link to the page where you can donate to the team of professor roswell and their drug development efforts Professor Dr. Roosevelt, thank you so much for the interview. The floor is open, as they say. You may add any comments or thoughts that you'd like at this time. Uh, no, I have no further comments. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll do our best and uh, hopefully um, um, if we um, uh, can develop this further, then uh, you know, the prognosis is that it'll take about six months before the first antibody can go into man approved by the regulatory authorities very nice thank you so much for that possibility for me and uh, i support your project 100 percent and uh, we keep in touch and maybe next time when i go to rotterdam <laughs> i just come over for a coffee maybe <laughs> okay <laughs> okay thank you so much professor okay bye-bye take care bye-bye